Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you succeed in your GCSEs. This lesson, proteins. This topic's been requested by a lot of people, including Alicia Traore, Shanice Agiamang, Amber Aliyin, Courtney Graham, Fishbite Cast, Crown British, Emily Lewis, Jake Ellis, Abdul Qureshi, Nigam Thaka, Young Flips, Rosa J, Hannah Smith, and Amina Hussain. Thanks guys. If you've got a topic which you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. Proteins are really useful molecules in our bodies. We use them for things like growth and repair. And we get all of the protein which we need from our diet. Our bodies digest the proteins and break them down into amino acids. And then the ribosomes in our cells reassemble those amino acids into the proteins which we need. Check this video here just to recap cells and whereabouts the ribosomes are. When I talked about photosynthesis in this video, I talked about how one of the end products is glucose. Plants can then take that glucose and use it as a building block for all sorts of things like starches and cellulose, but they also use some of that glucose to produce proteins, along with some nitrate ions which they've absorbed from the soil. And I will cover the whole nitrogen cycle in a later video. Plants use some of the energy from respiration to turn some of the glucose molecules which they produce during photosynthesis into amino acids, which they then assemble into really long chains. And these are our proteins. It's a little bit like polymerization in chemistry, where you're taking small molecules and chaining them together to make a much bigger, longer molecule. Now these long protein chains don't stay in a nice long straight chain, they tend to curl up and they tend to form very specific and unique shapes which other molecules can quite often fit into. A good example of this is enzymes which I cover in this video here. Enzymes have a very specific, very unique shape which allows them to catalyze one specific reaction and just that one reaction. And that's due to their unique shape. And that's due to the way that the proteins fold up and form a very unique structure. Now this type of protein is a functional protein, but there are other types of protein as well. Functional proteins are proteins with a job, with a purpose, with some sort of action to perform, as enzymes do. Other examples of these are hormones and antibodies. The alternative to this is structural proteins. These are the building blocks which our bodies are made from, and they tend to go into making body tissues, such as muscle tissue or collagen. The sequence in which amino acids are joined to each other determines what protein you get. So it's important that your body has a set of instructions which tells it what sequence to order different amino acids in. And it does, this is your DNA. Each individual gene in your DNA tells your body how to make one particular protein. And every different gene affects the production of a different protein. Now, of course, if there are differences in your DNA, then that can affect how well your body can produce a particular protein. And so sometimes that DNA might be damaged, in which case your body might not be able to produce that particular protein. Or it might be that that particular section of DNA, that particular gene, wasn't copied correctly during the reproduction process which formed you. This is what we call a mutation. It's damage or change to a particular gene which affects how it assembles a particular protein. Now, in some cases, this might make no difference at all. Remember, you get two sets of DNA, some from your father and some from your mother. And so it could be that you have a recessive trait which you have inherited from one of those parents, but the dominant trait overrides it and your body continues to function exactly as it otherwise would. But sometimes those mutations can start to build up, those changes to the DNA can start to build up, and your body will produce different proteins in different ways. Please check my videos on inheritance to see more about how these genetic conditions can be passed on. But it's important to bear in mind that conditions are only passed on if that gene is present in the sperm cell or the egg cell, which subsequently fuse together to form the embryo. If they are not present in that sperm cell or that egg cell, then they're not going to be passed on. Now, it could be that those are mutations which have been inherited from the previous generation, or it could be due to damage, for example, from exposure to radiation or carcinogens, which have happened during that person's lifetime. 
But either way, if they are not present in those gametes, which then go on to form the next embryo, then go on to form the next child, then they don't get passed on. So that covers the things which everyone needs to know about proteins, regardless of specification, either new or old. There is one more thing which some of you need to know about, but not all of you, and that's protein synthesis. If you are doing one of the legacy specifications, the outgoing ones, uh, then if you were doing either of the OCR specifications or the Edexcel specification, then you need to know about protein synthesis. On the new specifications, if you're doing any of the combined sciences or dual award sciences, then you don't need to know about it. But if you're doing the triple award sciences on any of the specifications, then you do need to know about protein synthesis. It gets pretty confusing and I've been trying to track these changes across a dozen different specifications. I'm quite confused myself. So I strongly recommend that you double check with your science teacher, whoever's teaching you that biology, to find out whether or not you need to know about protein synthesis. And I'm going to cover protein synthesis in my next video, which will be up next Friday. I hope that video really helped you. To see what else I can help you with, there's lots more videos to check out on my channel. Scroll down the main page there to see I've already sorted them into playlists to help you find the video you need. You can also check out my revision guides which cover everything you need to know for the exam. They feature links to my videos, revision tips, cover both foundation and higher tier, and unlike a lot of revision guides, they also point out what you don't need to waste time. If you want to check your learning, try the Snap Quiz website and app, which allow you to identify which areas you need to spend the most time learning. Remember, this is the only YouTube channel which brings you the teachers, the textbooks, and the tests all on your terms, on mobile phone, tablet, or computer, for you to revise when you want and how you want, even immediately before you go into the exam. All of these links and any others for this video will be down in the description. Lastly, it really does help my channel if you want to leave the likes, if you subscribe, or if you know someone else who's having trouble, tell them to search for Mr. Thornton. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.